Hello, be welcome to our very first chat about payments, especially baked for developers. My name is Jose, and I'm a developer relations engineer at Google Pay. Today with us, we have Eric Brook, who is the Vice President of Engineering at Spot Hero. Hello, Eric, and thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Jose, thank you for having me today. I think a great way to start would be to learn a bit more about Spot Hero and what you do. So could you tell us in your own words what Spot Hero is about and what's your vision towards urban mobility and uh, sustainable transportation? So our goal is to make parking easier. In fact, just making it easier for customers to get everywhere. Um, and that's really what we focus on, um, is making sure that you can park easily, well, regardless of your trip, whether it be like getting a monthly or like going to an event or going on a shopping trip. That's our goal, make it easier. So moving a bit more towards the technical domain, what would you say at a high level is the tech stack that you are using at Spot Hero? Yeah, so our journey started on a Python Django monolith. Um, and bit by bit, we've grown beyond that. So for an example, we need search to be really performant and fast. Um, and so we moved it to Golang to really improve its performance and responsiveness. Like many people, we have multiple stacks. So you have an Android stack, you have an iOS stack, um, and you have a data science stack. I'm not going to go cover all of them, but Android, obviously, we're using Kotlin, XML, and it's something that we're very proud of as one of our channels for customers. That is a pretty diverse set of uh, technologies, also pretty modern as well. And it's great to see a good amount of uh, open source in there as well. It would be interesting to hear more about the uh, model pipeline that you have. Concretely, what purpose are you giving to those statistical or mathematical models, uh, especially if there's uh, any of those which is payments related? One of them is dynamic pricing. Um, so a lot of people, when they think of car parking, they think of like, oh, look, there's a wall, has a list of prices or a list of rates, as we call them, and that's a kind of it. Um, in actual fact, it's very, very complex. Most garages have about 100 different rates, and to coordinate that um, manually is incredible amount of work. So one of the things we're doing working with um, operators, those that own car parks and manage them, is to make a system more dynamic, something we're kind of used to from the airline industry or even hotels. So dynamic pricing is very important to us, and we released it about a year ago, and we're working with key operators to really make this smart. Um, when it comes to building a product like Spot Hero, what were some key technical challenges that you faced uh, during that process? The industry itself was very cash-based. So that was probably one of our biggest challenges, is helping the industry move to more of a digital payments perspective. But broadly, some of the most complex areas, um, the number one would probably be integrations. We work with about 35 different companies that have different hardware and different software. And these parks companies are the ones that build the gates, the ticket machines, and all the other varieties. And of course, um, they all work in very different ways. So integrations with the parks equipment is actually probably the number one. Um, number two, I mentioned a little bit earlier, is search is being performant on search, giving people the right information um, is probably kind of like our second challenge. And then the third challenge is, um, it is technical, but it's something that startups often see, and that is shared understanding about what work we're doing. When you start with a monolith, you often end up, you often end up with multiple layers of different types of work. So one of the things that we're focused on very much now is using something like domain-driven um, design to really understand and break up the work that we have to do. This makes it easier for product, it makes it easier for engineers, and then they don't kind of think, I have to look at 64 different things to understand what the side effects are. So domain-driven design is something that we're definitely investing at the moment. I think that in a world where mobile phones are carrying so many utilities that we use on a daily basis, it feels that payments could be an important piece of that puzzle. They're essential. Um, without them, we don't really have a business, like um, because we don't really work in cash, we work in digital payments. So understanding how digital payments work, how are they trusted by consumers, which ones do consumers prefer to use, um, are really important to have as part of our understanding. Um, 
Google and other companies have made this much, much easier with things like Google Pay, which are actually fairly easy to hook up with. And how are you playing with the uh, fragmentation of the multiple options that you have today? Like if you go to um, some services, some website, websites or applications, I think for a good reason today, there, there's a, a, a sizable amount of options, uh, which is hard to handle sometimes for the user because you may have like six or seven of those. How are you dealing with that and, and maybe thinking about choosing the two or three top uh, best options for, for payments for a, any given customer? Yeah, you're right. Um, it's very important to choose the right ones and make sure the customer has the right choices because we want that to be simple for the customer. We also want to be following the trends in terms of which ones are they already invested in as customers. Um, so we pay attention to how consus I'm sorry, customers move through the market, what do they trust, and what do they prefer to pay with. Um, the other thought process is how easy are the SDKs to work with? From an engineering perspective, that's really important because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to be able to hook this in, make it really simple, be able to trust it, and audit it when necessary. And precisely in that regard, what was your experience integrating uh, Google Pay in your Android application? Really simple, actually. Um, so I thought it was one line of code, but I checked, and it's actually five lines of code. Um, and basically, Not too bad. yeah, and we're pulling together like the Stripe params because um, we use Stripe as our payment processor for Spot Hero, and then we're passing that information directly to the Google SDK. Um, it actually getting up and running was really simple. The thing that we probably took a little bit more time was testing it and believing it, it was this simple. So testing and staging um, was something that we had took a little time to figure out, um, but it was well worth the investment. Uh, you said that uh, making payments work in pre-production environments was uh, less straightforward. What advice would you have for other developers maybe facing similar challenges? I think that one of the beautiful things about technology sector at the moment is that everybody shares what they learn. So there's a lot of blogs out there. A couple of things to really think about, though, is making sure you have good testing around your payment system. If you can make it automated, that's great. Saves engineers time. It saves test engineers time as well. The other things you need to think about is when you do test it in production, making sure you have a credit card that you can use for that purpose um, and always having a test account that you can do for that purpose. Um, payments is important and also keeping our customers, our drivers um, safe is really important to us. So test it, understand it, make sure that um, you're not setting up your customers for failure. I like the note on automated testing. I think it's, it's, not, it's not said enough that it actually saves time uh, no matter how it looks like at the beginning. I've heard that you integrated Google Pay a while back. So I'm sure that uh, you were able to collect a good amount of um, information, uh, metrics, um, insights about how it really did and how it developed. Do you have some more quantitative information on how that played out? And I think if we could talk about um, both new users and existing users, uh, I think that would be that would be a great perspective to bring. Yeah, so we introduced it um, in October 2017. And um, as I said, it was a fairly simple process. And we actually worked with Google to figure out a promotion to get people to see um, how that would work. So we motivated them for a promotion. Um, where we are now is about 33% of all our Android users use Google Pay today. Um, and we see that trend going up as more and more people trust their kind of like their wallets and their finances to mobile phones. That's great to, to hear, actually. Now, looking into the future, how would you like to see the digital payments ecosystem adapt and evolve to this first changing surroundings and environment that we face today? Yeah, I think um, from a business perspective, one of the things we really appreciate is being able to audit payments in an easy fashion. One of the pieces of work that comes up later, not when you're starting out in a small startup, but when you get to kind of like hundreds of thousands and millions of kind of like transactions, you've also got to think about PCI compliance. So how you use um, protecting credit card information, even if you're not necessarily using it. Who are you passing that off to? Who's doing that work? So being able to audit it is something that's really, really helpful for businesses as they grow. Um, and it also saves us doing the work, another good thing that's really helpful in that. In terms of going forward, we all have to work on building trust and making sure that 
all of the payment systems are fully transparent to the customer and that they understand what any extra fees are about. So the more transparent we are, the more people will trust us. And we have to do that, not just as payment processors as a company, but also like companies like Spot Hero, doing the right by the customers. Now, we believe that there is great knowledge behind each project, each team working on, on you know, real applications, real services, real products. So we'd like to ask you about a well-kept secret or a tip or a recipe that you use and practice at Spot Hero that you think every developer should know about. Yeah, I think a lot of tech companies are very similar because we learn and share from each other. Whether you hear transparency, autonomy, um, making sure we have blameless retros, making sure you have the opportunities to work with cutting edge technology, a lot of us do that. I think from a Spot Hero perspective, one of the things we deeply care about is we don't view you as a resource or a cog in a wheel or a hamster in a ball. We view you as a human. And so when we think about our decision making, about where people move, what is their career growth, we're not just thinking about your ability to write code or even your ability to collaborate as an engineer. We're thinking about you. What are you like when you go home? How are you surviving the environment? Whatever that be. So thinking about the wider perspective of this human, we really care about. And I think that's something that, as a tech industry, we should pay a lot of attention to. Yeah, I was about to comment on that, but I think you, you said it best. So I think the, uh, the, the one thing that I could say is uh, thank you so much for sharing that bit of time and your knowledge with us and with our viewers. And uh, I really wish you all the best for any existing and new adventures ahead. So thank you. Thank you, Eric, for being with us. Yeah, it's great to be here today, Jose. And that was uh, Eric Brook from Spot Hero. Thank you to you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ooh.